Welcome to Round 5 of the Parenting Roundabout Podcast for the week of April 19th. I'm Nicole Erdix, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Hello. And Catherine Haleko. Hello. Today we're taking a break from talking and complaining and obsessing and instead shouting out things other people are doing that we think you'll find as useful or as enjoyable as we do. We call this our Roundabout Roundup. Um, this week I wanted to mention an app that... I actually rarely use now that I live in California or, (laughs) you know, because I live in California, Southern California, Mm -hmm. because it's, it's named Storm Radar app. (laughs) And (laughs) we don't get a lot of big storms down here, but when we do, man, it is big news. (laughs) And we want to know exactly (laughs) what to expect and when, because... We're, we don't have our rain jackets and umbrellas on hand. We've got to dig those out every year. They are in the back of our closet. We, you know, yep. and we, we, we need to take photos. We have to make sure that our phone is charged so that we can take photos. We've got to post to Twitter. Not for We've safety, to, but like, to make sure you can take photos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, there's a lot to talk about when there's a storm. We want to know, like, what, like, how long is this going to go on so that I can... <laughs> You know, so there's a lot of things that happen when there's a when there's a a storm happening here in Uh Southern California. So the Storm Radar app is very helpful because it actually gives you. So it's basically like a radar weather radar map, and you put your location, you pin your location, and then um, it has this like elapsed time in the future. Or yeah, that kind of does not make sense, but it it has this clock of, you know, the next three hours or whatever. Yeah. And then as it moves along, you can see the weather changing on the radar. Mm-hmm. And then it will simultaneously tell you, you know, if it's going to be raining at that point and what, per- you know, how much it will rain and e- exact time it will rain, like 549, it's going to rain. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> it's very accurate like I it, it's it's pretty accurate but um I go to it now like it doesn't I'm sure you can get I don't know no I don't think you get temperatures on there maybe you do but anyway I refer to it when um you know if I go to my weather app and it says it's going to rain today then I'll go to my storm radar and have a look at what time so I can be prepared <laughs> in every way <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense but yeah, Storm Radar app. It's very handy. Hmm. So, Catherine, what do you have this week? Well, um, I'm going to mention a little treat. I don't know if you've ever had mochi ice cream. So it's basically like a little bite of ice cream surrounded by like a rice flour dough. It's I think it's a Japanese thing. Hmm. So it's like an ice cream dumpling. You know, you got the you got the outside that's doughy and then inside is a nice just little like single Hmm. serve two bites of ice cream and Mm -hmm. um so my daughter and I had to go to um a town a a nearby town but you know like a whatever 75 miles away or something no more than that (laughs) um And she had a skating test. So, you know, she periodically takes these figure skating tests where she performs in front of a panel of judges and they score her. And Hmm, um, yeah, I saw that on Facebook. Yeah. And so she, two years ago, had passed a really big, important test in this same town. And we had noticed while we were there that the grocery store had in their freezer, they had this special freezer dedicated to mochi. And you could pick out your flavors and they were like individually wrapped little mochi. And Mm -hmm. so we decided, you know, that if she passed the test, we were going to get the mochi and we did. And then this week, this past weekend, we went back again um, to the same town. And so once again, she's like, well, if I pass my test, we're going to go get the mochi. (laughs) Because we remember this grocery store and this mochi freezer and blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> so so we get, she passed the test. We got the mochi. We ate them on our way home. And then she said, 
did you know that the grocery store in our town has these? <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? I had no idea. <laughs> so then I go online and um, yeah, they have them everywhere. We, I was thinking it was like this special treat and it was so random that uh-huh. they were at this like <laughs> tiny town in northern Wisconsin. Like, why do they have yep. these here? No, they have them everywhere. <laughs> everywhere (laughs) i like that on their website it appears that their tagline is chew your ice cream because whatever (laughs) there you go (laughs) yes it's kind of a funny sensation you know because it's a little bit like an ice cream sandwich but Uh uh-huh it's you know fully enclosed the ice cream the ice cream right. and the doughy huh. stuff. So, um, and well, not only can you here. buy like the individually wrapped ones that come in the special mm-hmm. OG freezer, but you can just get a yeah. box of them. <laughs> 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 uh, and whether you eat them one at a time or all at the yeah, same time, I wouldn't recommend. No one needs to know. All. Write it in your diary. We won't peek. <laughs> we won't. Will we, Terry? <laughs> unless you, unless you give, if you give us one, we'll give you your privacy. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Those yeah, sound yummy. So my probably not Weight Watchers favored, yeah, but, but yummy. It's portion controlled. It's very small. There you go. So there you go. So that's my mochi <laughs> and Terry. Yum. Yum. Here we are at your turn. We're ready for you to tell us <laughs> what you're enjoying this week. Yeah. For the third time since August, I get to say Taylor Swift has a new album. <laughs> Except in this case, it's kind of a new old album. Uh, she has set herself the task of re-recording her first six albums, which the masters of which belong to somebody else, and she would like to own them. So she is recording apparently faithful versions of the originals so that you can just slip these right into your playlists and nobody needs to know. So I revisited this album. It's now called Fearless Taylor's Version. It was her second studio album and probably her first biggest uh, hit. And uh, I really like these songs. I had forgotten how much I enjoyed these songs. It's been ages since I've been go- gone back and listened to Fearless. And now, of course, as a good Swifty, I will only listen to Fearless Taylor's version because, you know, if somebody's going to be getting my money, it might as well be her. But uh, it's really interesting listening to it. She's she's recorded them as close to her teenage voice as she can now at 31. And uh, it just sounds like old times. But she's also added, you know, there's all the, the deluxe versions of the album that came up. Uh, along over the time. She's re-recorded those songs too, faithfully, but there's also some songs which she calls From the Vault that Mm -hmm. she wrote at the time but didn't make it onto any versions of the record. So now she's free to record those however she wants to. Uh, And of those, I find that the one called Mr. Perfectly Fine is one heck of an earworm. I am singing that all the time. So uh, <laughs> if you are curious about this uh, endeavor and want to listen to some of it without committing by like listening to it on your music service of choice, uh, YouTube has lyric videos of all the songs on the album. So we'll have the link to that in the show notes and you can go listen to them all. And remember what it was like way back when Taylor Swift was song- singing a song about being 15 and... Uh, you know, you were somewhat older at the time, but still enjoyed it because it was a jam. So, uh, Fearless Taylor's version. Go convert over all your uh, playlists to those songs. Will you please? Thank you. And that is it for another week of Parenting Roundabout. If you missed any of our earlier episodes this week, look them up on Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts to hear what we have to say about impossible missions, kids' privacy, and the lost year of the pandemic. You can also find all our episodes at ParentingRoundabout.com and talk back in the comments there on our Facebook page or on Twitter, where you'll find us at Roundabout Chat. And please visit our Amazon shop at Amazon.com slash shop slash Momitude, where you can find links to a lot of the things we talk about. Have a great weekend and see you back here on Monday. <laughs>